Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video we're going to take a look at the Gantt chart. I'm going to explain why you would want to use the Gantt chart, where you can go and get it because it's not native to Power BI Desktop, how you can set up your data and then how to actually set up the different properties to make the most out of the Gantt chart. So let's jump right in. Now, if you've never worked with a custom visual before, what we can do is go and get those from the marketplace. And inside of Power BI, we can click right here on this ellipsis to go out to the marketplace. And this is going to show us all of the custom visuals that exist. Now, some of these are paid. They've been developed by people that have put a lot of time and effort and energy into creating some really awesome custom visuals that we can leverage. And a lot of them are actually free. And even more interestingly, you'll notice that a lot of these are created by the Microsoft Corporation. And so the one that we're gonna be looking for here is the Gantt chart. And when I search for that, you'll notice that this one over here on the left is the Gantt chart. It's the one I'm looking for. It is free, no charge to you and no charge to me. That rhymed. And it's by the Microsoft Corporation. You'll notice it has a little blue check mark on it as well as a bonus, which means that this is a visualization that has been certified by Microsoft. So that is great. And if you want to add this to your Power BI report, you click on it right there. And then on the next screen, it gives you information and you click add. All right, so I'm gonna close that up. The next step I wanna take a look at is the data because this is actually really important. How do we structure our data so that we can use it within the Gantt chart effectively? I just entered the data directly in Power BI. Obviously, you would normally have this in a table, in an Excel file, somewhere outside of Power BI that's being managed, but I inserted the data right here by using Enter data. Now, I recommend never really ever using enter data unless you're building just a really quick proof of concept or testing something out, but never for a real viable project. Now, a couple of things here. Let's talk about the data. The first thing you'll see is the project. I have two projects that I've put inside of this data. The first one is called Project Alpha. The second one is Project Contoso. The next thing that's really important for the Gantt chart is the different tasks that need to be completed. Now you'll notice that I added some variation in here. I have slightly different tasks. The first project has three sprints and then the next project is a shorter project. It only has one sprint. So I, I added some kind of variation here. You'll also notice, and this is also something that is effectively required if you really wanna get the most out of the Gantt chart, we have a start date for each task and we have an end date for each task, so that's great. Then we have some optional things that can add a lot of value and really help us to get the most out of the Gantt chart. We have the employee assigned. That can be really great. We can put that inside of a tooltip or we can put that right there on a data label inside of the Gantt chart itself. We then have the progress. Now I just hard coded the progress in here, but you, if you're working with real live projects, you'll have some kind of checkbox that can be checked off. You may have some kind of you know, uh, logic that you build around this based on the ending date of that task and the current date, that's up to you. But I put in here one for 100%, 0.6 for 60%, so on and so forth. I also added a column based on the progress that says I'm complete in process or that task has not yet started. That's a future task. Now, to add a little bit more variability, on project alpha, sprint twos and sprint three actually end up being in process at the same time. This happens in the real world, so I wanted to do that just to see what that would look like in the Gantt chart. And then I added this other column here called milestone. Now, I, re I realized as I was playing around with this right before this video, because I had not tested this part out yet, I made a mistake with this. So I'll show you how I think you're supposed to fix this mistake in a moment because uh, I noticed a very interesting oddity. But this is the data. Most of these fields are you know, uh, are optional. Some of these are gonna be required, like the project, the task, the start and the end date. You really wanna have those to get the most out of this. So we have the Gantt chart visual added in the Power BI desktop. Let's go ahead and set this up and configure this quickly here. The first thing that you're going to add is going to be the parent, right? The parent is going to be the project. The project that I am tracking, that I'm measuring, the status of. The next thing is the individual task within that hierarchy of that project, and I named mine task. So I'll bring that over right there. Now this is starting to look pretty good, but it obviously doesn't look like a Gantt chart quite yet. It just looks like a bar chart. The next thing that I can do with that is I'll bring over the start date, drop that on start date, 
and then we'll bring over the ending date and we'll drop that on end date. Now, this is where the chart starts to look a lot better. There are some things that we're going to wanna change here. You'll notice across the timeline at the top, this is going on a week by week basis. If we wanna make that monthly or daily, we can change that and I'll show you how. I wanna put on the legend and this will start giving us some color and some flavor here inside of our visual. I wanna put on the legend our status so I can see which tasks have been completed, which ones are in progress, and then which ones have not yet started. All right, so we have a chart that now looks something like this. Now this is pretty good, but another really awesome feature with this Gantt chart is that we can add in our completion. This is really cool. I like this feature a lot. That's why I created that column called progress and then I put in those values of it's 100% complete, 60%, 35%, etc. And I'm gonna drop the progress right here under completion. Now, a couple of things, actually I see it's messing up. This count of progress should not be a count, it should be sum, so I'll just put that in there. The count was wrong. Uh, and you'll look at this here and it starts to look pretty good. You can see all of these tasks are completed, they're fully highlighted, that's awesome. This one is in progress, you can see it's about 35%. This one is not yet started. Same thing here, these two tasks are overlapping a little bit. Um, I love it. This looks great. There's little, there's, there's quite a bit more we can do here. So, but so far this is looking really, really good. Now, a couple of other things here, right? We have all of that information. The resource is a couple of different things, right? Originally I saw resource and I thought, oh, I can put who the resource is that's on that project. So I can bring in the employee assigned and put them on that project. And it shows up as a little bit of a data label. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think this looks great. You can also go into formatting and update this. So let's do a little bit with formatting and then we'll come back. If I go over to the format tab, there is actually quite a bit we can do. First of all, if I go down to data labels, which is these labels that are currently showing up, I can put that inside the, the different bars that we have for different terms. I mean, a Gantt chart is a bar chart in, you know, in all respects here, right? So I could put that inside of there and then I could see who the person is who was assigned to that task. That's pretty cool. You can also change the task color, the font size of the color, et cetera, the normal things that you can normally do. Another thing that I wanna change here is the data type. Now the data type is what controls this timeline kind of that we have across the top, which is weekly. And you'll notice right here, it's by week as well. So what I can do is I can actually change this to month and it's gonna give me a much better view of longer projects, right? I can see kind of the full end to end scope of that project, when it starts, when it's going to end and where I'm at all the way through that project, which is really cool. So this is where you can change that property right there. I turned on task completion. Now, why am I showing you this? This is what makes, if I turn this off, this is what makes completion work. You have to have this cap capability turned on. Now, for some reason or another, and this drove me absolutely crazy until I figured it out. Mine was set to four. I don't know if that's the default or if I was just clicking around in here learning stuff. I, I'm very good at breaking stuff and I had turned it to four and not realized it. But if I turn this to four, it actually takes the completed amount and divides it by four, it seems. And it shows it doesn't ever show completed. It's really weird to me. I, I don't know what I did with that or what that means, but just make sure to leave that as one or don't touch it and I think you'll be okay. But that one really, really got to me. All right, and then category labels, that's gonna be what's over here on the left. I'll leave those alone. The legend, I do normally change my legend. I don't like the default color, so I'll go in here and make that green right there and then make that one red. So these are just basic properties that you could turn on within this. Now, if you were not looking at this broken down by the project, instead of looking at the data like I'm currently looking at it, I can get rid of the status, move the task up to the legend, move the project up to the task, and then I can actually watch and just stick with me for just a moment. I can group the tasks together and you can actually see them on one line like this. Now, because I created that overlap, Sprint 2 and Sprint 3 look weird, you can of course go into your legend and change the colors a little bit here, but you don't get that hierarchy that you got before. So there's probably, oh, and, and, and the most important property is this rounded bars, right? Gabe, I make, sure, I make sure you turn that on. But you can play around with this and see what works best for you. The last thing that I realized I messed up was the milestone. I actually really like this milestone capability, but here's what I did wrong. 
if I bring the milestone over and drop it in milestones, it winds up replacing the task that was at that place. You, if you look at this, if I hit Control Z, it's not even, I don't know why Control Z is not working for me today, but if I go back, it's probably custom visual. If I come back and I remove it, I get my task. So it really doesn't allow me to show both the task and the milestone. If I flip back over to the Power Query editor, what it means is that I really need to, for this milestone, I need to create a new row that is at the end of whatever that is, right? So if I say, hey, project is funded, project has started, whatever it is that I'm trying to measure here, what I can do is insert a row right here and then let me kind of just duplicate most of this real quick. So I'm gonna do that and I haven't tested this out, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly going to work for me. I'm gonna do SOW, we'll do Amy here, we'll do 100% complete, we'll do complete and then we'll say project started, okay? And then just because I wanna make sure that we do this the right way, that was SOW, we'll do it down here as well. So I'll insert the row, Let's see if it'll let me copy all of this at one time because most of it's the same. And this is really the main part I wanna change. So this is the date that it was completed and then we'll do this right here. All right, so again, proof of concept, this entering data here, it works really, really great. So I'll do that, click okay. And I think this is going to get the job done for the milestone capability without replacing that current task, which we absolutely don't want. So we'll hit close and apply. And then we're gonna add the milestone back in and that looks awesome. This is that milestone right there. That's a milestone right there. So it shows up on there for each of your various projects. Now, if I had in here a slicer, so let's bring in the slicer and then bring in our project right here. And I click on project alpha or uh, project consoso. I need to go in and mess with the slicer here. But if you click on either one of them here, you can flip back and forth and only look at one project at a time, which I think is really awesome as well. So that right there is the Gantt chart. Very easy, very intuitive. It's free and you can just add it right into Power BI Desktop. The biggest challenge that I had with this was really figuring out how to set up and configure the data to get the most out of this Gantt chart. But once you figure that out and you start playing with the settings, it's like any other visual in Power BI. As always, we hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.